All right. Good morning. Good morning. Or good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, depending on what part of the country you're joining us from. Coach Kevin here, and we are going to go ahead and get started. First thing I'd like to do is go ahead and share my screen with you and point out a few things, particularly if you're here for the very first time with us, or maybe the, you're seeing this as a recording and looking to join us. The first thing I'd like to point out is we have a Facebook group that coincides with this meetup. It actually has the same name. I want to be really rich and I do not apologize for it. The way you can find us is to go into your own Facebook account and type in wherever it says search Facebook. I want to be really rich and I do not apologize for it. And you'll find our group. When you do come ask to join us, we'll be happy to have you. Okay. The other thing I'd like to point out is that you could go directly to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash I want to be really rich. That's another way you can come find us. All right. So why would you want to do that? Well, first of all, if we have anything special that needs to be announced to the group, it's usually pinned towards the top, any special announcements. Uh, the other thing, as long as I remember to hit play, which I typically do, or excuse me, not play, but record on the Zoom meeting, I'll go ahead and record it. <clears throat> and then typically either the same day or the next morning, it will be posted into the group. So for instance, if you're on today and you really like what we're talking about and you're like, oh, what was it that he said or she said or they said, because we're, we are gonna have group participation at some point, you may hear something you really wanna hear again or you missed something, you can go back and review the recording, which is awesome. Uh, the other thing too is outside of the 45 minutes or so we have together each day, Monday through Friday, you can come in here, possibly ask some questions if you need to and we'll try and get back to you and answer those questions. All right, speaking of questions, <clears throat> if, you, if you start typing into chat right now, I'm not gonna be paying any attention to chat, okay? Just want you to know that. Um, what we will do is when the time's appropriate, we're gonna save 10 to 15 minutes towards the end of what we're doing. And what we do is we open that, open that time up for you guys to share what you wanna share and ask whatever questions you wanna ask. And that works out very well for us. So that's the way that we're gonna go ahead and function. It keeps thing, everything nice and orderly and we get to hear your voice. And if you show it to us, we get to see your face. If you don't show it to us, that's okay. As long as we can hear your voice. <laughs> All right, next thing I wanna point out is what we're in the middle of studying right now, okay? We are always gonna be going through something in relationship to, <clears throat> excuse me, or that will be helpful to having us manifest more money and more wealth into our lives. Okay, why? Because of the type of group that we are. That doesn't mean that what you're learning won't help you manifest in other areas of your life, for instance, relationships or health and whatnot. However, our focus is going to be money. So if I pick something, it is going to be helpful in manifesting money and wealth. Now, here's what I will tell you also. Not every single thing we do every single day will be filled with the words money and wealth all the time. We could be going through something that will help you do that, but they may talk about something else. That doesn't mean that the techniques that they're encouraging you to use and the things that they're trying to make you aware of and the laws that they're trying to teach you are not going to help you manifest more money and wealth in your life. It just might mean that the particular thing that they're talking about might be in relationship to something else However, if you were to apply it to manifesting more money in your wealth and wealth in your life, it will get you there. All right. <clears throat> We've started originally on November 5th. I sometimes I go through a summary of everything that we've done up until now, um, as far as what books we've gone through and and not just books, but articles and other pieces of material that we've had available to us to study. But I'm not going to go ahead and do that today. What I'm going to do is tell you what we're in the process of going through. It is a book called The Game of Life and How to Play It. And it's by Florence Scovel Shin. Okay. And it was written quite a while ago. Florence isn't with us any longer. And what I like to do, I have the book on Kindle. I also have it on Audible. However, if possible, when we're going through something, I try to pick things that I can get you free access to so that you can actually go find it and follow along yourself and have your own copy of whatever it is that we're doing. 
So I was able to do that. I just typed in Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Skoloshin. And what popped up is an answer. Uh, not the first thing, but I scrolled down a little bit, went through a few of them. This is the one I like the best, okay? I happen to like this one right here, which is The Game of Life by Florence Skoloshin, dash free ebook. And then the website that it's on is www.globalgrayebooks.com that says Game of Life ebook here. <clears throat> when I clicked on that link, what popped up was this. Now it didn't bring me to page 12. <laughs> it brought me to the first page. Well, actually it didn't even do that. What it did, at, actually, let me show you what it did. That's right, this one's a little bit different. It brought me to this page right here. And then what I did is I scrolled down a little ways and boom, right here. I went ahead and found the PDF, downloaded it, and now I have my copy. So if you go do the same thing, you can get the same thing. And then this is the copy that you'll have. All right. So I went ahead and got myself a copy of it. And you can go get the same one so that you could follow along. And when I say, hey, we're on page 12, you could be on page 12, which would be the exact same page. Uh, because they've named all the chapters here, but for some reason, either the publisher or Florence at the time she did it didn't choose to number the chapters. All right. So why this particular book at this point she talks quite a bit about i she she will call them treatments or she'll give other words for them okay um but essentially what we refer to as manifest or excuse me um affirmations or auto suggestions she is basically sharing frequently throughout what she's sharing different actual things that other people had used to manifest what they want. So I love that she shares a lot of stories of real people that have done real things and she shares specifically what they did. So I felt that this would be powerful for you guys at this point that where we're at, because a lot of you are trying to figure out what it is that you want to, we've hopefully figuring out or have what you want in life. And you've been given the formula essentially from the science of getting rich, which was the very first book we went through starting in November last year. Uh, but hopefully this gives you good ideas of what to tell yourself to not only manifest, but to reprogram your subconscious mind to work together with you, which that's another book we went through, Power of Your Subconscious Mind, not too long ago. All right. So we are on the law of prosperity. I'm gonna go ahead and have a sip of water here. And then I'm gonna start reading. You can go download your own copy and follow along if you choose not to right now. I'm gonna to continue to share my screen for right now. So you can just follow along that way and then you can go back and um, get a copy later if you want to. And I highly recommend that you do so you can get caught up because we went through some wonderful material this past Friday. Um, and that would get you caught up. You're essentially one day behind on this particular work. You can also join the Facebook group and go find Friday's recording. And that's another way you can catch up with us if you like to. Or you could just jump in where we're at and just keep moving forward with us. All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right. The law of prosperity, good stuff here. Yea, <clears throat> the almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. One of the greatest messages given to the race through the scriptures is that God is man's supply and that man can release through his spoken word all that belongs to him by divine right. He must, however, have perfect faith in his spoken word. Isaiah said, my word shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish that where unto it is sent. We know now that words and thoughts are a tremendous vibratory force ever molding man's body and affairs. A woman came to me in great distress and said she was to be sued on the 15th of the month for $3,000. She knew of no way of getting the money and was in despair. I told her God was her supply and that there is a supply for every demand. Let me repeat that. I told her God was her supply 
and that there is a supply for every demand. So I spoke the word. I gave thanks that the woman would receive $3,000 at the right time in the right way. I told her she must have perfect faith and act her perfect faith. The 15th came, but no money had materialized. She called me on the phone and asked what she was to do. I replied, it is Saturday, so they won't sue you today. <laughs> Your part is to act rich, thereby showing perfect faith that you will receive it by Monday. She asked me to lunch with her to keep up her courage. When I joined her at a restaurant, I said, this is no time to economize. Order an expensive luncheon. Act as if you already have $3,000. All things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. You must act as if you had already received. The next morning, she called up me on the phone and asked me to stay with her during the day. I said, no, you are divinely protected and God is never too late. In the evening, she phoned again, greatly excited and said, my dear, a miracle has happened. I was sitting in my room this morning when the doorbell rang. I said to the maid, don't let anyone in. The maid, however, looked out the window and said, it's your cousin with the long white beard. So I said, call him back. I'd like to see him. He was just turning the corner when he heard the maid's voice and he came back. He talked for about an hour. And just as he was leaving, he said, oh, by the way, how are finances? I told him I needed the money and he said, why, my dear, I will give you $3,000 the first of the month. I didn't like to tell him I was going to be sued. What shall I do? I won't receive it till the first of the month and I must have it tomorrow. I said, I'll keep on treating. So affirming, okay, using auto suggestion. I said, spirit is never too late. I give thanks that she has received the money on the invisible plane and that it manifests on time. The next morning, her cousin called her up and said, come to my office this morning. I will give you the money. That afternoon, she had $3,000 to her credit in the bank and wrote checks as rapidly as her excitement could, would permit. If one asks for success and prepares for failure, you guys pay attention to this. If one asks for success and prepares for failure, he or she will get the situation he or she prepared for. If one asks for success and prepares for failure, he or she will get the situation he or she prepared for. For example, a man came to me asking me to speak the word that a certain debt would be wiped out. I found he spent his time planning what he would say to the man when he did not pay his bill, thereby neutralizing my words. He should have seen himself paying the debt. We have a wonderful illustration of this in the Bible relating to the three kings who were in the desert without water for their men and horses. They consulted the prophet Elisha, who gave them this astonishing message. Thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet make this valley full of ditches. Man must prepare for the thing and women must prepare for the thing he or she asked for when there isn't the slightest sign of it in sight. Let me repeat that. Man or woman must prepare for the thing he or she asked for when there isn't the slightest sign of it in sight. For example, a woman found it necessary to look for an apartment during the year when there was a great shortage of apartments in New York. It was considered almost an impossibility. And her friends were very sorry for her and said, isn't that too bad? You'll have to store your furniture and live in a hotel. She replied, you needn't feel sorry for me. I'm a Superman and I'll get an apartment. She spoke the words, infinite spirit, open the way for the right apartment. She knew there was a supply for every demand and that she was unconditioned working on the spiritual plane and that one with God is a majority. So she wasn't letting outside appearances affect her. She had contemplated buying new blankets when the tempter, outside appearances, the adverse thought or reasoning mind suggested 
don't buy the blankets, perhaps. After all, you won't get an apartment and you'll have no use for them. She promptly replied to herself, her inner self, I'll dig my ditches by buying the blankets. So she prepared for the apartment, acted as though she already had it. She found one in a miraculous way, and it was given to her, although there were over 200 other applicants. The blankets showed active faith. It is needless to say that the ditches dug by the three kings in the desert were filled to overflowing. Getting into the spiritual swing of things is no easy matter for the average person. The adverse thoughts of doubt and fear surge from the subconscious. They are the army of the aliens, which must be put to flight. This explains why it is so often darkest before the dawn. A big demonstration is usually preceded by tormenting thoughts. Having made a statement of high spiritual truth, one challenges the old beliefs in the subconscious and error is exposed to be put out. This is the time when one must make his affirmations of truth repeatedly and rejoice and give thanks that he has already received. Before ye call, I shall answer. This means that every good and perfect gift is already man's awaiting his recognition. Man can only receive what he sees himself receiving. The children of Israel were told that they could have all the land that they could see. This is true of every man. He has only the land with his own mental vision. Every great work, every big accomplishment has been brought into manifestation through holding to the vision. And often just before the big achievement comes apparent failure and discouragement. The children of Israel, when they reached the promised land, were afraid to go in, for they said it was filled with giants who made them feel like grasshoppers. And there we saw the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. This is almost every man's experience. However, the one who knows spiritual law is undisturbed by appearance and rejoices while he is yet in captivity. That is, he holds to his vision and gives thanks that the end is accomplished. He has received. Jesus Christ gave a wonderful example of this. He said to his disciples, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then come at the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are ripe and all ready to harvest. His clear vision pierced the world of matter, and he saw clearly the fourth dimensional world, things as they really are, perfect and complete in divine mind. So man must ever hold the vision of his journey's end and demand the manifestation of that which he has already received. It may be his perfect health, love, supply, station, home, or friends. I'll go back here for a second. So yet in captivity, let's go here. However, the one who knows spiritual law is undisturbed by appearance and rejoices while he is yet in captivity. What does that mean? When the outer appearance of things is not what it is that he or she truly is working to manifest, okay? But they rejoice at that point because they know they're going to receive what it is they want. It's on its way. They are all finished and perfect ideas registered in divine mind, man's own superconscious mind, and must come through him, not to him. Let me repeat that. They're all finished and perfect ideas registered in divine mind, man's own superconscious mind, the mind that is connected with God in the universe. It must come through him, not to him. For example, a man came to me asking for treatment for success. It was imperative that he raise within a certain time $50,000 for his business. The time limit was almost up when he came to me in despair. No one wanted to invest in his enterprise and the bank had flatly refused to loan. I replied, I suppose you lost your temper while at the bank, therefore your power. You can control any situation if you first control yourself. Go back to the bank, I added, and I will treat. My treatment was, you are identified in love with the spirit of everything connected with the bank. Let the divine idea come out of this situation. He replied, 
Woman, you're talking about an impossibility. Tomorrow's Saturday. The bank closes at 12 and my train won't get me there until 10. And the time limit is up tomorrow. And anyway, they won't do it. It's too late. I replied, God doesn't need any time and is never too late. With him, all things are possible. I added, I don't know anything about business, but I know all about God. He replied, it all sounds fine when I sit here listening to you, but when I go out, it's terrible. He lived in a distant city, and I did not hear from him for a week. Then came a letter. It read, you were right. I raised the money, and I will never again doubt the truth of all that you told me. I saw him a few weeks later, and he said, and I said, what happened? You evidently had plenty of time after all. He replied, my train was late, and I got there just 15 minutes to 12. I walked into the bank quietly and said, I have come for the loan, and they gave it to me without question. It was the last 15 minutes of the time allotted him, and infinite spirit was not too late. In this instance, the man could never have demonstrated a loan. He needed someone to help him hold to the vision. This is what one man can do for another. I'm going to repeat this paragraph, okay, because uh, some of you have wondered what's the difference between what we're doing daily versus what is coaching, and here we go. It was the last 15 minutes of time allotted to him, and infinite spirit was not too late. Awesome. In this instance, the man could never have demonstrated alone. He needed someone to help him hold to the vision. This is what one man or woman can do for another. This is what a coach does for you guys, by the way. It's one of the things that I do. You need someone who's already been through this over and 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 comes through it successfully. Not saying that I've never made any mistakes or I've always come through successfully, but you need someone who this has been their life for a while so that when you're walking through it, if you're like, well, you know what, I'm just going to find another person who's going to study this with me. If you're on the same level, it's kind of hard to move up to the next level. Okay. This is very much why you would need or want a coach. Jesus Christ knew the truth of this when he said, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. One gets too close to his or her own affairs, and becomes doubtful and fearful. The friend, coach, healer, sees clearly the success, health, or prosperity and never wavers. But he's not so close to the situation. It is much easier to demonstrate for someone else than for oneself. So a person should not hesitate to ask for help if he feels himself wavering. A keen observer of life once said, no man can fail if some one person sees him successful. Such is the power of the vision, and many a great man has owed his success to a wife or sister or friend who believed in him and held without wavering to the perfect pattern. Okay. So we're actually, we could read for like two more minutes, three more minutes, but I think what we're going to do is we are going to come off and go into our sharing part of what we're doing here. And we will pick back up tomorrow, the power of the word. All right. Hey, grateful for those of you who come and join us. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Looks like we even have a few new people that joined us today. Terrific. So let me explain what we're doing here and how this works. This is your opportunity to go ahead and share uh, or ask questions. So what is it that you would share? Well, if you've been with us for a while, some of you have been with us for a long while, following along for weeks. Uh, if you've been with us for a while, go ahead and share anything in relationship to what you've learned so far or what you learned today that has impacted you. Um, the other thing you could share is anything that has gone well for you in manifesting whatever it is you want in your life. Obviously, money and wealth would be terrific. 
However, if it's in relationships or health or some other form or format, that's awesome too. Go ahead and share your experiences with the law of attraction and following the laws to actually manifest what you want. That would be awesome. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could ask questions, again, related to what we've talked about in the past, whatever it was that we talked about today in what we were reading and or anything related to manifesting more money and wealth in your life. So this is your opportunity to share what you like to share or ask whatever questions you would like to ask. All you need to do is come off mute and start talking and we'll take you in the order that you go ahead and do that. Thank you. Gonna play shy. <laughs> Come on, people. Please share, even if it's your stories of something that has gone well for you that you could share with others to, to uplift and to give. This is a form of giving and paying it forward to others. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Landon. Hey, so uh, I have a pretty good story. Um, somebody in this group had recommended that uh, a book and it was about like the, the magic by Rhonda Burns or, um, and so I got it and I've been going through the daily gratitude. Uh, and one thing that it made me do was uh, when you go out to like a restaurant or something, you always like you know, give thanks to the person and like give gratitude and like feel gratitude towards everyone that's serving you. Um, and so I did that and I told my wife that I was doing it. She's kind of been on board with it. And um, within like, you know, and I kept doing that with everybody I was interacting with. And then uh, we went to a brewery right after and some random guy came up and just bought us a round of drinks and then walked away. And I was just like, <laughs> it was just very random. Uh, we were only in that, that bar for like, you know, 30 minutes and it just you know it just happened like that on the one time that I'm going out of my way to like and that was my day for gratitude towards servers and other people and like receiving what I was getting it was small but it was still significant in the fact that I knew that I had brought it into my life so it was pretty cool there you go and you didn't do it for that purpose but recognizing why it came and how it came that's awesome and that's what you said that's the significant part often we're blessed with things in our life and we don't recognize the blessing, so we don't give thanks and gratitude. Therefore, we, we kind of cut off the cycle sometimes. But if we're mm -hmm. thankful and grateful for everything that happens to us, we don't cut off the cycle. Awesome. Awesome. And by the way, congrats. Congrats, congrats. Thank Landon. you. I'm excited. Yeah. Landon has decided, and he is joining the coaching group. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You know, one of the things that um, I watched this weekend was uh, Bob Proctor on uh, making decisions, and he spoke a lot about that. And so I was just like, you know, you got to just, you know, jump in with two feet. The leap of faith is kind of the, the thought that was kind of running through my head. So I'm excited to, you know, see the next step. Awesome. Awesome. And for anybody else who likes to, you still can join us this week because we're going to roll it next week and bring everybody together. So again, congratulations. So to pick it back, hi. Hi. This is Francine. Hey, uh, Francine. To pick it back on what Landon just said, um, I think I'm the one that <laughs> mentioned that book and did all the exercises. Yep. And I just come back from two weeks of skiing um, in Utah and in um, Colorado, and uh, it was just like like Landon said, you know, it helps you make decisions, and when you make decisions, you you feel happy about them, and uh, you also keep being grateful. I mean, I sometimes I forget, you know, to say thank you for whatever whatever uh, throughout the day, and uh, and. Um, it's, it's really very important to do all that because my life is changing right now and I'm seeing a huge difference. So I, I think that uh, between you and the extra reading, I think it really all helps out. 
Awesome. I have not signed up yet. <laughs> well, you still can. You all can if you want to. I mean, I'd love to have you. I, you every one of you. I love, I mean, some of you are new on here going, who is this dude, right? But those of you that have been with us for a few weeks or even, you know, the last two to three months, I think you guys understand that this is, I get my joy out of watching you guys actually have the successes you have. I get my joy from your stories. I get my joy from your wins. I get my joy. I don't really get joy from hearing the struggle that you have in the sense of, oh yeah, I just want to hear about struggle. But I love when you share something and then you come back a few days later, or a week or two later, a month later even and say, hey, <laughs> you know what? I read the magic and followed through and, and this is what happened. Or you said something a couple of weeks ago or you said something today and I went out and something happened. So that is what I truly love. So thank you guys all for showing up or I wouldn't even have the opportunity to do this. So I appreciate it. Also, I just want to add that while I was gone, obviously I did some business. <laughs> And, and it's good business because I did not get to write any offers uh, because my clients um, had to compete. But however, I did a commercial referral, um, which was unexpected. And um, it's moving very fast forward because this, uh, this past client of mine and his uh, cousin had the cash to purchase a couple of things that they want commercially. So, so it, it was, you know, like you said, go out and have fun and make uh -huh. money. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it happened again. <laughs> you guys should all take that advice from her. I share it all the time that, you know, I've, I've probably typically have had the, the most unexpected money show up when I've been out having fun or on vacation than when I'm trying to push and shove to make stuff happen. So thank you. Good reminder. Uh, one other thing real quick. Uh, first off, Francine, thank you for that book suggestion. Um, it was cool. And there's also a chapter about uh, your friends and like the people that are in your life. And um, it's, it says to like, you know, write down several people that, you know, old friends that you haven't talked to in a long time and like kind of say like, thank you for being part of my life or whatever it was. And um, one of my best friends from when I was growing up that I haven't talked to in years called me a couple days after I did that and we talked for like an hour and a half and just like caught up she was like I've really missed you like I want to start reconnecting so it's not just you know getting money and you know all of that stuff that comes with it but there's also these emotional connections and like your know, your family and your friends can also be um kind of your I guess your relationships can be improved with this also which was pretty cool to see <laughs> love it love it love it this is Steph, you nailed it. I'm gonna piggyback on what he just said and, and say that um, prior to starting with Kevin and then since working with Kevin, um, the vibration level that we've all talked about and learned in the science of getting rich, the law of vibration, it, wealth is not just with the money factor. I mean, my I've had multiple old friends reconnect out of the blue within the last two to three months and multiple connections and just various, it's, it's, it's daily. It's daily and it's just multiplying, compounding. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, cool. Anybody else have anything cool that's happened since you've anything? Okay, it doesn't have to strictly, again, be money and, and whatnot, but anything that you feel like maybe being a part of what we do on a weekly basis has affected you in a positive way. Love might as well turn this into a sharing session of those things since we haven't had any questions pop up. I just have a quick um, question. What was the name of that book, Landon? No. It was that, the, um, the Magic the, by Rhonda Byrne. That was The Magic. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Well, I guess um, just to share, I think I shared last week and... Um, <laughs> about this uh, new interest, love interest in my life. And I feel like this is all, you know, part of this whole um, vibration that everybody's talking about and good things coming into people's life. But this weekend, um, it was a shock, but I, well, not a shock, but it was, it was unbelievable. But I, um, I was driven to Tiffany and, um, and, you know, he was basically proposing and wanting to buy me this crazy, 
um, awesome ring that they didn't even have in the store, the sizes that he wanted. So they are basically looking to bring him from other stores so that he could, you know, and he wanted like the top quality, blah, blah, blah. And um, we're not talking about small money, but um, yeah, it was definitely very shocking, um, the, you know, his offer. Um, so I, I just feel like I, I can't believe it. I, I still, I'm still in uh, clouds and trying to understand, you know, how I'm so blessed like this. It's just, um, it's unbelievable, but I'm very grateful and, and I, I definitely make sure to, you know, show my gratitude on a daily basis. So um, just wanted to share that. That was a, a, a surprising thing for me this weekend. That's awesome. Totally awesome. So let me give you one quick suggestion. Um, and, and I totally get how you're feeling right now, okay? Um, using words like, uh, I can't believe it, or that's unbelievable. That's only, you only say that, and we all only say this, because of a feeling of worthiness to receive it. Now, grateful because of your vibration, you are receiving it, okay? But let's be careful, even in gratitude, the words that we use, because when we say things, we, we should totally be believing that this can happen to us. This actually shouldn't be this big surprise. Now, I get that it is a particularly right now, Okay. I'm saying, and it's not that you're nonchalant because you want to show as much gratitude as possible. Let's say something to the effect is, this is amazing. I totally believe in this. I totally believe that God can provide anything I ask for and that God and the universe know exactly how to deliver what I ask for. I'm so happy and grateful that they've done something for me that I would have considered to be unbelievable in the past but now I consider it to be very common for my life because I'm connected with them more powerfully than I've ever been. Thank you. You're so right. Um, thank you for reminding me of that because um, you're absolutely right. That is definitely how I feel exactly in the face, in the way that you just phrased it. Um, I, I just, I guess I, I'm very clumsy with words. No, no, we're but not. Yeah, we're that's, just that's... programmed. <laughs> it's not clumsy as much as we're, <laughs> we're, we're programmed to say things we have this automatic because that's what we hear, right? We just, mm -hmm. so it, it's just a program. So we actually have to go, okay. <laughs> I, and myself too, occasionally something comes out of my mouth where I'm like, is that the way I should have said it? And even in, like I said, even in gratitude, it's like, I, I should have a hundred percent faith in this. I'm working on that, like all of us, right? Mm -hmm. And and yet it should, anything they do should not be unbelievable to me. It should be normal and commonplace because I'm connected to them. I'm not the one doing it. That's that's where we recognize we, we didn't do anything so unbelievable. Well, it's always going to be that way. We do very little when we receive mm -hmm. into our life. We're, we're the conduit. We just have to be in vibration so they can work through us, but mm -hmm. we don't do much of the work. <laughs> That is so true. I didn't do anything like you're right. And, and, and like you had been telling us all along, don't worry about the how, yeah. which um, I had a vision and I created the vision um, last year. And I, I had no idea how you know this was going to pan out or work out. And, um, and, and, and everything you've always told us over and over, don't worry about the how, just worry about the, the, you know, the desire of the things that you want, the vision and then let the how figure itself out. And that's exactly what happened in my situation right now is that I didn't know the how and I had I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just <laughs> created the vision and I uh, and then I just worked on trying to manifest it, but didn't worry about how it was gonna happen. So, um, awesome. so that, is, that is really cool, um, awesome. And I'm very grateful and thankful. And, and it just reaffirms the power of the universe and how things work it just re, re um i guess strengthened that belief for me even more so uh -huh. love it totally love it thank you <laughs> yeah thank you anybody else hi everybody hey, hey kevin hey, hi hey. i just wanted to say that um i did manifest that um, I'm doing uh, covered calls um, okay. in stocks. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> Don't really know exactly what I'm doing, but that's okay. But I, I actually did earn a thousand dollars, and so I'm 
I'm manifesting it because I'm like, uh, I want to go into the group, but I, I know I'm not doing this quite right, but I'm trying to let go of everything so, and try to. Okay, let me share with you. You already said, don't get stuck on this. So God just gave you, he just threw you one. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I got a thousand bucks. Don't wait for him to give you the five. You have the five. Okay. It's not how you want to use it, but you have it. Go use it and trust God to replenish it. Because he's probably not going to give you five right now because he knows he already gave you. He's trying to give you some faith and some more hope. Use it and trust that he'll replace it. I've watched different people that I've coached. Like I, <laughs> I watched this one guy, Matt, that I coached one-on-one -on -one who didn't, he, he did the same thing. He put it on a card and he did one-on-one. -on -one. So it wasn't five. Okay. It was more. <laughs> okay. and, and he did that. And literally in less than a week, a deal popped up before we could even really get into the coaching that God replenished the money. And then less than six months working together, he added over a hundred grand to his income. Wow. But he had to not take money that he had aside and earned because God already gave him the ability. He had to trust God would replenish it. And Landon really wants you to join us. So do <laughs> So does everybody. So does Stephanie. We all do. Okay. We want you to join us. So come on board this week. Let's get started next week and trust that God will replenish it. Because like I said, he's, he's showing you, but why, why is it 1000, not five? Cause he could have done five this weekend if he wanted to, he's trying to get you to jump, but he's also saying, look, I gave you something. You made up your mind, not my mind, how to use it and you're not using it. I gave you credit that's available to you. Most mm -hmm. think of this as an investment as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, not as like you're buying a television for your wall. I know I don't tell everybody this way, but I feel with you that this is, you actually have to get over this one because God is probably gonna prosper you in business. And as he does that, you may end up with business partners. You may end up with the type of business like real estate, or I don't know what you'll do, but you'll end up with something where at some point it might take debt to grow something. Okay. The, and Robert Kiyosaki would always advocate if it's for your growth, you would use it. If it's for your pleasure, don't. There's a difference. This isn't something for, you're not subscribing to some expensive YouTube channel or Netflix to learn how to do it. You're actually investing in you. People go get student loans to invest in themselves all the time, right? That's true. Yes, yes. Can I also tell you that I think when you keep saying to go have fun and go have fun, uh -huh. I, I, I really see it as, or at some point it, it clicked to me, like it's, it's the raise your vibration so much higher than when you're stressed or when you're like worrying about however things are happening or however, or for those of us that like to fix things or like to yeah. do things. Right. And so when you say that, and, the, and that is what happened when you told me to, to take the weekend and go hang out and do something. And so I realized that it was that my vibration was in a, my, my environment changed, my demeanor, my attitude, but my vibration got more joyful, more positive. And then I ended up getting the money on that house project thing. So I was like, Yes. So thank you because, because <laughs> you're, you're saying all this stuff. It's like, it's all, it's all connecting. And, and I think too, that it doesn't make sense for us to keep doing whatever we've been programmed to do because we're clearly not where we want to be or else we would not all be here an hour, you know, Monday through Friday joining in with you if it wasn't for that, because we are seeking something and we are seeking, you know, something different than what we already know how to do. So yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And yes. And so I need to be able to tell Landon you're going to join us. What do you think? <laughs> I'm closer than I was. So I haven't quite said yes. I, I yeah. Oh, you just, there you went me. right there. I'll take that one. I, you said I didn't <laughs> quite say yes. Then you said, yeah, well, we got it. <laughs> all right. We'll see. <laughs> hey, it's all, it's only your gain or loss. <laughs> so i know i know i need to do something yes yes you do and stephanie would stephanie. say the same thing and stephanie has already been going through this for a little bit so hey takara oh hi guys hi, I don't know if you're commenting or we just got this you just popped up though 
Okay, I did what you said. I went out and had fun on Friday. I went to a bar like across the street, my place. And am I getting was, all of you guys was, drunk? I keep telling everybody to go have fun, and it's like everybody's going to bars. <laughs> it, was awesome. it was awesome, and I met a guy. I met a, a Latin man. Um, I didn't like him. He uh, he actually paid for all my drinks, so that was manifesting money. Um, he was attractive, but he was he was just very he smelled so good, Kevin. Like the experience <laughs> when Latins dance with you, they told me like the man has to lead and the woman has to follow. So I was like, this is part of the law of attraction teaching me how to be with a man, like how to be a lady. And okay, this is okay. how and I was just inhaling him and like imagining like <laughs> wedding with him. <laughs> it, his name is Rick. I called him Ricky Ricardo because he was Latin. And it was a ball, Kevin. So I just really had fun this weekend. And then I got this paperwork to become certified from home to be an in-home provider. So but it's like a long to-do list, right, Kevin? But guess what I did? I scratched off everything as though it's already happened. Love and it. I haven't taken a step towards any of it yet. But in my brain, it's done. The kids are here. The students are happy. The money is in my bank account. I even took, um, I'm sorry, I have something to say. Please cut me off. I'm just so excited. No, you're, good. you're good. I even have um, my ATM uh, receipts and I turned the numbers into what I wanted it to reflect. So I have one for 81,000, one for 182,000 and another for 50,000. So I'm just feeling good about manifesting. I'm not pushing anymore. I've been studying um, the power of awareness again. And it says you literally don't do anything. So I'm just trying to sit with that. Like I want to go do something so bad, but I'm learning don't do anything. Like, I don't know. Am I on the right page with that? But yeah, well, things are happening. You, yeah, for anybody that's new, I don't want anybody to think we never do anything, okay? It's inspired action that we do. But also what, what he's saying in the power of awareness is, look, we really don't make this good stuff happen other than we have the ability to choose, which is awesome because we get to choose. We can run it by God and make sure that God's cool with it so that it's not going to be harmful. And we can always say this or something better. Therefore, if we choose something that wasn't meant to be, God will provide something better. But we're our, our job, and that's what is so weird about all of this to us, because we're not used to this. Our job is to be a little kid again with the intention of making it real. Think about that for a minute. Our job is to become a little kid again with the intention of making it real. Because when we were little kids, We'd get lost in play in our mind and with our friends, and we were, were those things. The thing is, is we, it was, we knew it was make believe, and we were cool with that as kids. God is saying, "Hey, what you used to do, now intend to make it real and stay there till it is real." Yeah, I've been doing that even with manifesting a husband. I literally last night pictured him in my bed, and I was like touching my pillow imagining that this is his body or, you know, or he's in the shower and I'm in the kitchen. Like when I'm doing my coffee, I pretend I even run the shower and it's like a real story in my brain. And then I come out and I'm like, oh, this is not really my life. But when someone asks me like, oh, are you married, ma'am? I say, no. Am I supposed to lie and say yes? Because I'm living in well, this imagination. Say, 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 you know what? Mr. Wright is on his way and I'll have him soon. Something like okay. that. Yeah, right. just, I don't know. But... I like the way you put it because <laughs> they all want me to have a baby on my hand like today. And I'm just like, I'm still, you know, imagining all that. But marriage is first. Well, money, then marriage, then the babies. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the order I'm in. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're doing that because most, it seems like a lot of the world has babies that they try and figure out the money, then eventually get married. <laughs> no way, Jose. And am I late because my phone was messing up? Did Landon say he joined the group? He did. Oh, that's so good. I'm sorry. I'm so happy. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Akira. <laughs> Got it. I'm so happy for you. Uh, I'm going to be up there too. Just give me some time. You're on my 300 list, Kevin, so I'm going to be one of your clients, if you'll have me. Of course, of course. Know. 
I was thinking about getting rid of my apartment to get my security and I pay for it because that's the only property that I have. But I would have to move. <laughs> so, if, it, if it felt in, it's funny enough. If it felt inspired, then that's you should do it. If it's just a thought, then ask God if it's right. Okay. There are people that have done things like that to so sold their mm -hmm. transportation or whatever to get help and. I, I did things years ago. Well, I still do things sometimes, but I've did things, something years ago that didn't make any logical sense, mm. but it was led. There's a difference when, when it's led and it's weird versus when it's our own idea and it's weird. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully that makes some sense to you guys. Like when you're, when you're prompted to do something that is totally out of the ordinary or out of character for you, but it's prompted, go do it. Okay. But when you're just like, well, I heard so-and-so did such and such, run that by God. Unless okay. you heard that story and that story like, ba boom, and you're like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do too. Because okay. I remember once I wanted to attend something and it was a pretty good, you know, sales pitch, so to speak. And when it was all done, I'm like, okay, I don't know how I'm going to pay for all this, but you put this down payment thing on it. And then I was going to have to figure out travel and other stuff. So I did, mm -hmm. but I did it out of thinking that was the process instead of asking God about it. And ultimately it didn't happen. And, you know, not that it was a massive amount, but at the time, because it was what I had, right. It was massive. So it was 500 mm -hmm. bucks or 600 bucks or something. I needed to come up with like three times that mm -hmm. plus the money to go there. And what happened was, is I felt bad about it the whole time. So of course I wasn't going to manifest the rest or whatever, but I've done it with as much as $38,000 <laughs> and felt terrific about it and had no clue where it was going to come from. Oh. Right. And yeah. so, and, but it showed up in less than two and a half months, the 38,000 was all paid back. And then I made 400,000 over the next eight months. So. Wow. I'm going to get there, Kevin. Yeah. You're giving me hope. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Kevin, can I just share that um something similar to that happened to me? Like I um I, I was at happy hour. I don't even drink, okay? I'm at happy hour with friends that were drinking and someone, one of our so-called well, sort of friends says says to another friend who's like um for international like do you if you want to come i you know i have a second um bathroom and and bedroom if you want to come i'm hardly ever here you can you know you can move in with me so at some point because i'm i've you know decided oh i need to invest more money i'm going to downsize my apartment and so i ended up calling him this was like months later no one took him up on the offer um, but he had another friend who was going to move in and then he said, well, come by and check out my place. And I did. And then um, he ended up saying, you know what, forget, forget my other friend. I'm just going to let you have it. And so, but I prayed about it for like three months until, until God said to me, okay, you can, you can move. My family thought I was crazy. My friends thought I was crazy. And I just knew that I had asked God for the, and, and that he had said to me, yes, go ahead. And I, I wasn't going to do it if, and I didn't need to do it. It was just that I had decided that I wanted to um, have more monies to do other things with, and that I didn't need like a thousand square foot apartment like I had. And so it's been like the best thing that happened because it's um it's a two level co condo with a spiral staircase it's got a fireplace it's got skylights the my friend like is hardly ever home because he's he's like he goes all over the place so i kind of feel like the place belongs to me so i got like half price of what i was paying for my rent um it it, it everything kind of just worked out but again i feel like it's because I didn't do what Lillian wanted to do. I actually asked God first before I, I did made any of those because it's a, it was a big, big deal. But and I no matter what people were saying, I knew that it only mattered to me what that God had already told me that I could do it. And that if he said it was OK, everything else was going to fall into place and, and everything did so far. So it's been great. Awesome. So. Awesome. By the way, have you asked him about the coaching? 
I have, and it's I know it's me. It's me getting in the way. It's not. Well, then, it's not. Well, then get yeah, out of the I way. Know. Yeah. Well, what do you think <laughs> he told you? No, he told me it's okay to do. Okay, because I'm okay if he said no. Okay, I find you know there could no. be somebody else that's right, but yeah. No, it's it's no. I I got the sign yes, but it's me in my programming about like, well, I want to come up with the money, right? That's like, where, how, that's let where me... you're gonna. I, I, I have this strong intuitive feeling that if you don't do it, I'm not. It's not end of the world like apocalypse stuff, right? Okay, so I'm not gonna say anything like that. I have this strong feeling that you need to go through this process, even this decision process right now. You will feel. Here's what I would do. Okay, right now, I, I would go do it like when we're done with this call. Hey, Kevin, I'm going to do it. And I would get it done, but here's what I would do to help yourself feel better. Some people do something and then they're like, okay, <laughs> now what? I mean, I'll get you started doing things right away. So even though we'll get it mainly started next week, I'll have you doing some stuff to get ready. So you'll have stuff to do. But what some people, you know, the whole buyer's remorse when you buy a car house or whatever, you know, that or the fear like I just did whatever. What I tell people to do is then go throw a party for yourself, even if it's little, throw it to celebrate that you did it. I took the step, I did it. So whatever you like to do that you would treat yourself to a little party, treat yourself to some kind of let's have a good, and as a celebration of I stepped through the terror barrier, even though I'm feeling <laughs> a little bit that way right now, I stepped through it, I made a big leap and I'm gonna celebrate the leap that I made. Plan that out right now sign up, have your party, do what you're going to do, but you're going to, in one of the things we have to reprogram, which is totally fine, is we've got to reprogram this whole thought process because you're counting on still, that, that's why God's like, yeah, it's okay, but I'm going to hold, you know, you're going to have to do certain things. You are still counting on logic and money and business and other things. And it's, it doesn't mean God doesn't want you to remember all you've learned about money, business, and other things. I'm an entrepreneur, okay? I've been for a lot of years. I've coached a lot of business owners in different actual business things versus law of attraction things. And I, I can tell you right now that God will pop into my mind to use a skill or an experience that I have from that from time to time. But what I stay open to is, hey, God is now my business partner, and that dude knows way more than I do. <laughs> so he's the senior partner in this deal, which is cool. He's the senior partner that actually lets me decide which direction the business goes. And if I'm going off track, he'll, he'll get me back on track as long as I'm willing to listen. So he's actually probably more like a chairman of the board than the CEO. Does that make sense to you? Right. Chairman yeah. of the board is still totally in charge. He can take the hammer down and, and kick me out as CEO any day he wants. But the CEO is pretty much the one who guides the business. The chairman can be chairman of multiple businesses even. Right. But the CEO is usually CEO of one business. And our business, okay. is our, our business is our life. God wants to be the chairman of our life and we get to be the CEO. We will make decisions, but when it comes down to certain things, why would we not take a senior partner and ask for advice when he's got millions of years on us in experience that we don't have? Or, you know what I mean? I don't know how long, but so ask questions, get advice. And then when, and I say, you know, when God says, okay, it's cool, go do it, go do it. Chairman said it was okay. Chairman's not going to let the company collapse because you made a silly decision. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> can can I talk to you one-on-one uh, -on -one and, and run my situation yeah. by you and, yeah. and determine whether... It's, I'm sure it's beneficial yeah. for a lot of people, but it may not be as beneficial for others. Sure. Uh, so how can we do that? Email me, coach Kevin Sparks at Gmail. Okay, I will do and, that. And say you'd like to have a conversation. Okay. And you you would be surprised. I'm not <laughs> in a in a sense, because you I'm sure you are doing pretty well. I've had, well, in a way, they coached me too. I've coached Sharon Lecter and Robert Kiyosaki before. So coach Kevin at gmail.com. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I've been 
doing this for a long, long time, and I don't have the same goals as, you know, I'm sure. not an age group as some of the goals. people on this call. So yeah, so everybody I, does. I want to run my situation and what my goals are and see if I'm on the right track on my own or if I need fair a little enough. bit of help or a lot of help, whatever. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions or comments before we go today? I we should scare away anybody that was new. <laughs> All right. Hey, you guys, thank you for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you guys. Thanks again, Kevin.